Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be reading Mark chapter 16. Very interesting chapter. This is where Jesus is risen from the dead. So let's start out in verse 1. When the Sabbath was passed, this would have been Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Yoka, um, Yaakov, this would be James, his real name was Yaakov, and, and Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Okay, this is a, this is like, um, you know, embalming him. Okay, verse two. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb, when the sun had risen. They were saying among themselves, "Who will roll away the stone from the door uh, of the tomb for us?" For it was very big. Looking up, they saw that the stone was, was rolled back. Entering into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were amazed. He said to them, Don't be amazed. You seek Yeshua, the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he goes before you into Galilee. There you will see you will see him as he said to you. Okay? Now, very, very important you understand this. So from now on to the end of the chapter, okay, from verse 8. I'm going to go down here to the notes on the in the bottom of the screen. Uh, uh, this is verse 8. One isolated manuscript omits verses 9 to 20, but adds, uh, but adds this short ending of Mark to the end of verse 8. Um, they told all that had been commanded them briefly to those around Peter. After that, Jesus himself sent, sent them out from east to west with the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Okay. Now, let's scroll on down here a little bit more to see this other note. Now, Bear with me here. This is important information, important details. And I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to this in just, just a minute, okay? I'm going to tell you some important things here about these notes. So it says here, verse 9, the NU, again, the NU manuscripts are believed to be the oldest manuscripts, the, more, the most original, the more original manuscripts. The NU includes the text of verses 9 to 20, but mentions in a footnote that a few manuscripts omitted it. Okay? The translators of the World English Bible regard uh, Mark chapter 16, verses 9 to 20 as reliable based on an overwhelming majority of textual evidence, including not only the authoritative Greek majority text New Testament, but also the TR and many of the manuscripts cited in the NU text. Okay, so in other words, everything else I'm going to read from now on, the last few, um, the last through few paragraphs of this chapter, is not found in some manuscripts. Okay, but in the majority of manuscripts, it is found in. Okay, so keep that in mind, and I'm going to get I'm going to get back to you about that in just just a few minutes here. Verse eight. They went out, the TR uh, adds quickly. That would be the, like the Texas Receptus, King James, and that kind of stuff. Adds quickly. They went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come on them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, when he had risen early the first day of the week, he, prepared, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. He went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. For, okay, so after Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, she went and told those who had been with him 
uh, as they mourned and wept. When they heard that he was alive they had, and had been seen by her, they disbelieved. You think about it. How many times did Jesus tell his disciples that he, he was going to die and he was going to rise from the dead? And after all the times that, they, that Jesus told them, again, this reminds me of so many people who stare scriptures right in the, right, you know, face, bold face. They stare the scriptures right in front of them and they, and they deny it. They don't believe it. Or they dance around it. Or they say, oh, it's, you know, it's not what it means. Um, after all the miracles they saw, after all the stuff they heard from Jesus, they still didn't believe. Verse 12, after these things, he was, re- he was revealed in another form in two of them, or to two of them as they walked on their way into the country. They went away and told it to the rest. They didn't believe them either. Verse 14, afterwards, afterward, he was revealed to the eleven themselves as they sat at the table. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. <laughs> you know, I, I got to kind of chuckle here a little bit because, you know, you think that Jesus, but hey guys, I'm risen from the dead. I am risen from the dead. Instead, he comes back. He's like, you girl, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rebuking you right off the bat. Rebuke. Because they didn't believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Verse 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who disbelieves will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new, with new languages. They will take up serpents. And if they, drink dead, if they drink any deadly thing, it will in no way hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord, the NU adds Jesus, the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was received into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. They went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with the signs that followed. Amen. Now, one of the things I want to say here, now, especially in verses 17 and 18, let's go back to verses 17 and 18. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new languages, they will, they will take up serpents, they will drink any deadly thing, and it will, it will no way hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, when you've got a, por- a, pa- a portion of Scripture, like Mark 16, verses 8 to 20, that you know that some manuscripts does not have it in. Okay? When you have a portion of Scripture that is questionable enough to put a footnote on there saying, you know, there's a manuscript that doesn't have this in there. You shouldn't trust your life with it unless it agrees with other scriptures. Okay? There is no other scripture that we know of that it says specifically that if you believe, you will be able to take up serpents, snakes, and drink deadly poison and will not hurt you. Do you know, do you know how many people have died because they put their, their faith in this scripture alone. You know, you hear these about these snake handling churches and these people that die because of it, because they, they put their faith in this scripture alone. My dear friends, you've got to come with an open mind, but not an empty head. You've got to look at this and say, you know what? Does this, is there any other portions? Because this this particular thing is questionable, like right here we're reading from the World English Bible, and the translators believe that it's reliable. Doesn't mean that it is reliable. They believe that, it, that it's reliable because they it sounds like they really, they go by, um, they rely a lot on the majority text and that kind of thing. Doesn't really mean that it is reliable just because there's more manuscripts that are printed with it with that in doesn't mean that you know it's not like the majority rules here um it could be that the manuscript that that did not print it was actually the more of the more of an original copy however no matter which way you look at it be it be it totally reliable or not totally reliable you should not stake your life on this and you should not test the lord don't tempt god 
don't out of there's so much pride and presumption in the church today. You know, in snake handling churches and in churches that would you know that would take you know pass out poison for people to drink, whatever else, based upon this scripture, that is stupid, foolish. Okay, uh, don't do it. Um, no other gospel says that in it. Okay. And, and to see a footnote saying that there, this may not be in the original, 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 don't stake your life on it. Okay. I just want to be honest with you. Don't stake your life on this stuff. So the stuff that, is, that you read between eight verses eight to 20, take it with a grain of salt. Okay. Take it with a grain of salt. Once again, as you go away and you go through the rest of your day or evening uh, and you meditate upon his scriptures, meditate upon the, the word of God and the scriptures and the words of the prophets, may God bless you and enlighten the eyes of your heart, give you eyes to see, ears to hear, give you wisdom and revelation and give you wonderful, wonderful insight that most people do not have. So thanks again for watching and God bless.